As we continue with this month's foray into allegories, metaphors, and symbolism in film, we will be looking at certain movies that we recommend you should watch. The Lobster, Snowpiercer, and The Seventh Seal are obviously recommended, but they won't be included in this list since we already looked at them in detail. The filmmaker's intended message will be mentioned, but there will be no spoilers, at least not any more than what's in the film's description. And by the way, if you want to know more about allegorical movies, you can click on the link to check out our previous video on the subject. So without further ado, and in no specific order, here are some great examples of this literary device mixed in with some of your own selections. And today's video is kindly sponsored by Surfshark, but more on that midway. Let's begin with one of our favorite directors and fellow Quebecois, Denis Villeneuve. His film Enemy is an adaptation of The Double, a Portuguese novel by José Saramango. We follow Adam, a history professor, as he trudges along his less than interesting life. One day, he watches a movie that features an actor that looks exactly like him. He soon becomes obsessed with finding out who the actor is and wants to meet him. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm, I'm confused. And I know, I know this call must be just as confusing for you as it is for me. And I, I just... Denis Villeneuve has a way of getting the best out of his actors, and this movie is no exception. Jake Gyllenhaal's mannerisms, posture and intonation convinces that Adam and Anthony are two separate people. The cinematography and unnerving score bring an otherworldly touch to an otherwise mundane world. On the surface, Enemy might be a confusing movie about a doppelganger and recurring spider motifs. But once we go deeper, we realize that the film is about duality and the subconscious. The complex truth hidden under metaphors and symbols is not external or world-changing, but internal, personal, the conflict between what we want and what we feel we have to do. Oh, there's a family. Child scared of a family? I'll put you family. Okay, all right, enough, enough of that. Mm -hmm. Continuing with the theme of duality and doppelgangers, we add Jordan Peele's second directorial endeavor, Us. The Wilsons are on vacation and go to their beach house in Santa Cruz. While at the beach, the youngest, Jason, wanders off, but is soon found. This episode keeps Adelaide on edge because it brings a past trauma back to the surface. If that wasn't enough excitement for the day, a family shows up at their doorstep. A family that looks very much like them, but different and menacing. What? What? It's us. This movie has a lot to offer. Mystery, creepy visuals, comedic moments to lighten the mood, an abundance of symbols and patterns to pick apart and discuss, elements of slasher horror, and an off-putting performance by Lupita Nyong'o. Her very expressive eyes, the way she modulates her voice, the physicality involved in her two roles, not only do they showcase her range, they give us an eerie character that is hard to forget. Up next is another film we've mentioned in past videos, The Babadook. Amelia Vanek is a single mother that is raising a difficult child. Her already challenging life becomes stranger after she reads her son a bedtime story from a book called Mr. Babadook. If it's in a word or it's in a look, you can't get rid of the Babadook. The mother and child are then besieged by an invisible threatening force. This is one of those movies that shows us that you don't always need jump scares, spurting blood, or loud musical cues for its horror to be effective. This movie is a slow burn that prioritizes a gradual build over fast and easy answers. There's an oppressive and surreal atmosphere that increases as the movie progresses, enveloping the characters and by extension the audience in its nightmare. Jennifer Kent wanted to portray a person that has suppressed a really dark and painful experience and is frightened to face it. Like the first entry, this movie is more about the internal struggle and how it affects the surrounding reality. It's definitely alien, but it's uh, not a weapon. But I don't trust it, you know, I don't trust anything. That... <laughs> District 9 is not an easy movie to classify. It's a movie about aliens, but not about space travel or first contact. The novelty of the aliens has long worn off within the film's world. It has documentary-style footage, but we don't always stick to the doc format. It's got science fiction elements and also has a strong social commentary. Without going too deep into the plot, the film is about the uneasy cohabitation between the prawns and the people of Johannesburg. The aliens arrived over 20 years ago, and they are basically refugees that have been living in a part of the city, and are now being evicted by the main character, Vickis, and the agency he works for. Yeah, we are here to serve you an eviction notice. You just put your screw there. Hey, come on, come on. 
Through this movie, Neil Blomkamp wanted to reflect on his experiences growing up in Johannesburg and revisit the forced resettlement of impoverished neighborhoods under the veil of sci-fi. This movie strikes a good balance of action, gore, practical effects, body horror, and CG. They really maximized what they could do with a limited budget. On top of the visual aspect, the actor inhabiting Vickis' character is compelling and makes us care about what he's going through, even though you might dislike him at the start. You wouldn't really know it at first glance that Charlto Copley hadn't really acted before and that the majority of his lines were improvised. A viewer had this to add about the character. What Blomkamp does so well with District 9 is turning the tables on our lead, one of the agents responsible for monitoring activity within these refugee districts. He brings Vickis down to what Vickis perceives as a lower level, of not just class, but being. The director really hit a home run with his first at-bat for a feature. Before we go on, as a Canadian wanting to watch US movies, I'm sometimes locked out of some content. And if you wonder how we get around that, then you might be interested in getting a VPN, like the one we use from Surfshark. Not only does it give you access to a lot of geologged content, but most importantly, it protects your information by encrypting all the data that you send through the internet and where you are connecting from. And adding to that peace of mind, even they don't log your information. There are a lot of VPNs out there, but we prefer using Surfshark because it's one of the fastest, well-reviewed, affordable, and offers a slew of features. Not only does it work across all platforms, but you're not limited to the number of devices you can install it on. Use Surfshark Alert. That lets you know if your information appears in a leaked database, or Surfshark Search, to prevent ads or trackers to follow your searches. I definitely recommend you check it out on your own by going to surfshark.deals screened. If you use our promo code SCREENED, you will get 83% off the regular price, which means that for something like a couple of bucks a month, you can be fully protected. Plus, you'll get 3 months for free. Surfshark offers a 30-day money-back guarantee, so if you try it and you don't like it, you can simply cancel your subscription and get your money back. Now we return to the list. The following movie is also about aliens, but through a different approach, and it was made about two decades earlier. They live. Nara is a construction worker that's looking for work in a bad economy. One day, he happens upon a pair of special sunglasses. They allow him to see the subliminal messaging that's keeping people at bay, and worst of all, he now has the ability to see those behind the messages. All right today, sir. Okay, how's it going? Bye, thank you. Ghoul-like creatures that would otherwise look human. The movie is very much a rebuke of Ronald Reagan's economic policies and those who supported them. More than about its political message, John Carpenter wanted his film to stand on its own merit. At times campy, at times exaggerated, this movie unabashedly embraces the conventions of action films of the era. You can watch the movie while trying to find the parallels with reality, or just enjoy a fun 80s action romp filled with bigger-than-life moments and quotable one-liners. Now we move on to a film that is very much the opposite of our previous entry. It's about an hour longer, very much subdued and slow in comparison, not bombastic in any way. Andrei Tarkovsky's Stalker. The eponymous protagonist of the movie is a man whose purpose is to guide people into the zone. A mysterious area that's off-limits to everyone, but contains a room that's said to grant wishes. The stalker's clients are a professor and a writer, each with their own reasons to venture into the zone. This classic is not disposable entertainment. It's not a film that's concerned with keeping us hooked or on the edge of our seats. Just as an example, when told that the beginning was too long, Tarkovsky responded by making it even longer. The green landscape, the sound of the water, the long takes, they all give the film an earthy and organic quality that complements the themes of belief, faith, philosophy, and the uncovering of our deepest desires. Before we move on to our last movie, here are a few other interesting selections from the film club. Matrix, of course, the most infinitely layered allegorical movie of all time. The Bothersome Man is a great example. It's kind of a mix of Vivarium and Eraserhead. The cook, the thief, his wife and her lover is a great religious and political allegory with beautiful use of colors. This one's way more fluid than most allegorical movies, but Robert Eggers' The Lighthouse has an underlying exploration of masculinity, sexuality, and work. Perfect Blue. The idea of idolizing someone and denying their flaws is pushed to its limits, 
Her outward image splits from her and convinces her fans she is corrupted. I would recommend Cat People. A woman has a curse that if she desires a man, she will turn into a cat. It is all about sexual repression, and I would highly recommend it. Dogtooth by Yorgos Lanthimos. Terrifying, shocking, and very simple in its idea. Can be understood at the level of intuition and instinct. But no matter how simple the film may seem, it still shocks as if the viewer made an unobvious revelation. What's happening to me? Am I dying? Is this how it starts? Am I dying? We'll be ending this recommendation list with one of my all-time favorite horror films, David Cronenberg's remake of The Fly. It's a very simple and lean story. Seth is a scientist that tries to impress Veronica, a journalist, by showing off the fruit of his research, a teleportation pod. When he decides to test it on himself, a fly enters the pod, which causes both of their genetic structures to be fused. As time goes by, Seth begins to lose his humanity as he slowly morphs into an insect. No, I'm becoming something that never existed before. I'm becoming Brundlefly. The fly is body horror at its best. As we've mentioned in one of our previous videos, the gore, the disgusting practical effects, they all serve not only to shock us, but to show us a physical representation of the changes within. And just a word of advice, it's best if you don't eat once the transformation begins. Underneath the horrific visual surface, Cronenberg wants to make us think about aging and disease and forces us to confront those inevitable aspects of life, while exploring it within an unconventional and unearthly relationship. So that's it for this month's list, and I hope you enjoyed our look into allegories and metaphors in movies. We were supposed to have a community video next week, but we will be retooling that segment and reinstating it for a later month. For now, let us know what other genre or theme you would like for us to talk about in the future. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, subscribe if you haven't done so yet, and share with a friend. See you next time at the Film Club.